What's up YouTube? This is Champion 2D Rob back again. How's everyone doing? Um so I'd make this video. Um essentially this is uh, a pickups video, but I also wanted to do a video response to one of my pals on YouTube, um Mr. Retro Dave Nintendo. Uh he put out a video not too long ago uh with regards to how he felt about um reproductions, uh namely reproduction boxes and stuff. And um, I was having a bit of bit of a think about it, and um, it, it's quite, you know, like I I definitely see where Dave is coming from. Um, I I don't like the idea of people sort of trying to pass off um, reproduction stuff as genuine. Uh, that's definitely wrong. Definitely don't agree with that. But on the flip side to that, um, I don't necessarily have a problem with reproduction boxes as such. I think there are some people out there, I mean, we all collect in our own way. Everyone has their way of collecting, everyone has their preferences. And I think for some people, um, you know, that want to get boxed complete games, you know, it's just not an option, uh, whether for financial reasons primarily. Um, and I think some people you know even though they can't afford to get the, the genuine article you know the, the the boxes at least they still want they still want something to put on their shelf and that's where reproduction boxes come in you know because if you if you go for loose carts you know some of these reproduction boxes will at least allow them to display these games on the shelf and at least pass off the illusion that they are you know they 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 they, are, they look they are genuine even though they're not, uh, and I know a lot of collectors would cringe at such an idea, and personally I don't necessarily agree with doing that either. You know I mean if you guys have seen my collection here, they're, they're all genuine bleep box games, but I understand why some people might want to do that. So I do believe that there's a place for reproduction boxes, um, reproduction cartridges. Um, I just don't very much what Dave was saying, you know, it's, I just don't like it when they try to pass it off as genuine or even worse. And this is what causes a lot of headaches for a lot of people that shop on eBay is when people basically create Frankenstein, um, games, uh, where, you know, where they, they, they the, the, the cart might be genuine, but the box is a repro and the manual might be a repro or the cart might be a repro, but the box is genuine. And, and, these sorts of things cause great headaches for for a lot of collectors that are trying to get the genuine article and it really does uh, piss a lot of people off and I can understand in that sense um, why Dave would be so pissed off about it and you know for me as well you know as someone who also picks up uh, box and complete Super Nintendo games it can be a bit of a ball ache and it, of course it always is in the back of your mind when you're buying a box and complete Super Nintendo game, especially one that's um, quite expensive and quite sought after, because those tend to be the ones that uh, are replicated. And it is, it is frustrating, and I definitely see where, where Dave is coming from there. But as I was saying, you know, I, I, I do believe there's a place for reproduction boxes. Um, personally, myself, um, if I wanted to cr have, because obviously, like, most of you guys know, um, with regards to the NES, um, I go for loose carts, but because I want to display them, I, I sort of keep them in hard plastic cases with with uh, paper inserts. Obviously, those are not the genuine boxes, um, but I like to look at them, and I know a lot of people don't have issue with those sorts of cases. Um, uh, and, and, you know, so that for me, for the NES anyway, is fine with me. I'm, I'm perfectly happy doing that. But with Super Nintendo, um, you know, if I was going to use uh, a, a sort of replacement box, uh, personally, I would not use a, a reproduction box. I would just go again with hard case because I prefer hard cases anyway. I mean, if if, if I can't get the original box, you know, I, I wouldn't really settle for another cardboard box, you know, because cardboard boxes wear out over time. You know, hard plastic cases are just a bit more durable. So that'd be my preference. Um, but but also I wanted to to to, to touch upon uh, sellers, the way they try to advertise um, the 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 games that they're trying to to auction, uh, 
you know whether whether it be stuff that has reproduction boxes but might be the genuine game and they just don't really advertise that the box is reproduction unless you ask or it's very subtle in their description and it's easy to miss and um yeah i definitely don't agree with that at all uh but to play devil's advocate you know and and and, and i'm not saying i agree with this but you know they, they are you know as long as they make some reference to it whether it's an obvious one or not you know they're, they're just doing just enough to cover themselves um so they can just go back so if you if you if you buy from them and you find out the box is fake you know they'll say well it was in the description you know now obviously that is definitely wrong i definitely don't agree with that but from a legal standpoint they've covered themselves they said it and it really is down to you to to pick up everything so you've got to be careful because um it's just a salesman tactic, you know. A lot of salesmen do this, not just with games. They do it with used cars. What? They, a lot of people highlight the best stuff, and they, and they, and, they, and they kind of keep the, the the less desirable things to the bottom. So you got to look out for that as well. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm going to show you my pickups, and and funnily enough, it was funny that um, that Dave actually brought this up because I actually did actually buy a reproduction game. Uh, but uh, I know that once you see it, it's it's not really going to fall into what um, Dave was saying because um, this game is is it's a reproduction. It's, it's a PAL reproduction of a um, of a Japanese Super Famicom exclusive game only. And uh, I mean, I, yeah, I'll, I'll just go straight into pickups. Um, the game game that I picked up. Uh, for the Super Nintendo, like I say, it is a, is a pal. It's a reproduction, and uh, it's a game that I've wanted to play for a long time now. Uh, it, unfortunately, it's a um, it's a Japanese exclusive game. Now, I do pick up Japanese Super Famicom games, and this game actually was on my list to get. But the problem I'm ha having is that the game is just really expensive. I mean, we're talking about three hundred to four hundred pounds. That's how much it is for the original. Uh, box and complete Super Famicom version of the game, and I just can't justify that kind of price. Um, so I stumbled along. I stumbled on this on eBay. Now, initially with reproduction carts, I generally just go for the carts, but in this case, it actually came with a box and a manual as well. And the game I got is um, Undercover Cops, and yeah, is a uh, like I say, uh, this game was never released in Europe, so yeah, this is obviously a fake, a reproduction. Um, and to be perfectly honest with you, it's not even a, a convincing uh, reproduction. I mean, you can just about see it here, but the the box has some, like they basically what they did was they took like they made like a cardboard box. It's it's a very it's a very sturdy box, but uh, they sort of glued the the, the cover on top and. The glue hasn't quite stuck, so it's like some of the adhesive is sort of it's basically got like a few bubbles, got some bubbling going on just underneath. And you can just about pick it up, I don't know. You can't really see it, but yeah, you can see it there. It's sort of bub bubbling up, so it didn't really do a, a very good job with the box, to be perfectly honest. But um, it is a sturdy box, and uh, it will do. Uh, I'm not too fussed about it, to be honest. And uh, it did also come with. Um, a manual Let's take that out also came with a manual as well and again it's 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 very poor um, it's not it's not particularly well cut um, it's quite flimsy very cheap looking honestly um, but you know like I said I wasn't too fast because I, I knew what I was getting uh, and then of course you've got the cartridge as well um yeah cartridge is fine it plays perfectly i, I play it on i play it on the retron 5 and it plays great no, no issues with it at all uh it's a great game honestly it's a fantastic game but um while i i would still very much like to get it for the super famicom um it's just very hard to justify the price so that's still a question mark on whether i get that at some point but this was a much much cheaper <laughs> ridiculously a lot, lot cheaper in fact the reason why i got it i got it boxed and, and so forth was because it was actually cheaper than getting a, a, a loose car i stumbled on this seller a very good seller it was very well packed um but yeah 
but I'm happy to play it, you know. I'm a big fan of it. It's, it's a side-scrolling beat-em-up, for those that don't know. It's a side-scrolling beat-em-up based on an arcade game. Very, very good arcade beat-em-up. Uh, great level design. Uh, a lot of fun. So really, really chuffed to get that. And uh, next thing I picked up, this is a game for the NES. And I picked up Strider on the NES. Uh, a very cool game. Uh, this is basically a very different version to the Strider games that we're all used to. This is plays a lot more like um, like Metroid. Like think think Super Metroid. Think uh, Castlevania Symphony Symphony of the Night. It's that Metroidvania type of game where it's two D action exploration type. Uh, not that much different to uh, the most recent Strider game that came out not too long ago. Uh, this is a very cool game, great condition. Um, only problem I'm having is actually I, I can't get this game to run on the uh, Retron 5. This game won't play. Um, it just says fail, failure to dump ROM. Uh, I don't know what's, what's wrong, whether it's just not compatible. Um, I've cleaned it out. It's it's in perfect nick. There's no real damage to it or nothing. But I just can't seem to get it to work. Um, how I've basically played this game, I happen to have this game on the Game Boy Advance as part of the compilation, that's why I'm familiar with the title. But uh, yeah, I can't get it to work, unfortunately. Um, and I don't have a NES to play it on, but uh, it seems in good nick. I don't really have a problem with it, aside, so I'll, 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 I'll get it working at some point, hopefully, but we'll see. And uh, lastly, I picked up uh, three uh, Game Boy titles. All boxed and complete. Uh, the only thing is, they're actually all Japanese Game Boy games. I actually picked these up from a seller uh, here in the UK, and he must have had um, a bunch of new old stock of Japanese titles, and they were very cheap, so they were definitely worth picking up. Um, first title I got here is um, Ghostbusters 2. And uh, I want to point out these were all in mint condition, fully complete. Uh, they were just the prices were just too good to pass up. This was this one was only seven pound, and uh, it's basically a port of the uh, HAL Laboratories NES title. It's a fantastic game. I love it on the NES. I've got it on the NES. Brilliant game, and this is basically a port of it. And uh, yeah, it's a great title. Really, really chuffed to get that, especially for that price. Uh, next game I also picked up is uh, Nemesis 2. Um, I believe this is Gradius, Gradius 2. And again, I picked this up. This was £9. And it's in great condition. Really, really chuffed to get that one as well. And lastly, I picked up uh, Castlevania 2, Belmont's Revenge. And uh, I actually do have a... a uh, a power copy of this game as a loose cart, but I just couldn't pass it up. I know you know me, I'm a big fan of Castlevania, so to get this and it was uh 14 quid. This was 14 pounds box to complete. Uh this is by far the, the best Castlevania game on the uh, uh game the original Game Boy. You've got three Game Boy uh three Castlevania games on the original Game Boy. Uh the first one is so so the third one is uh, and this is the best one it plays the best Best level design, I think. Um, yeah, we're really, really chuffed with that as well. So that's it. Uh, that's basically uh, my pickups and my video response to uh, Retro Dave. Uh, just just to reiterate, I don't have an issue with, with uh, repro boxes. I just have an issue with uh, people trying to pass them off as genuine on eBay. Uh, I do believe they have their place. Um, I think there are some people that buy retro games that... Uh, probably would like repro, bo repro boxes that's not to say I, I, I like them myself I, I like I say if I was to go go for replacement cases I would go for hard plastic cases which are more obvious to people that they're not genuine but I can definitely see um, Dave's point of view I can definitely understand where he's coming from um, but uh, I but I don't necessarily agree with the sort of it devalues the collection and so forth and so forth. Like in terms, if you knowingly bought a a a reproduction box for your genuine loose cart, because I don't really look at it as value. I mean, I my collection, I'm sure, is, is worth a lot of money, but I I, I never look at it from that from from a financial aspect. I just I just buy the games because they're games I want to 
it play and enjoy and put on the shelf. I never think about the value of things like that. I don't. That's not how I judge it. Um, but I'm sure to some more hardcore collectors that that is probably their their viewpoint. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just it's like I say. Um, it's just for me. It's just how it's sold. I don't like underhand tactics. I don't like to be deceived. Um, you know, 